So this is the question that was requested, and I think this was one of the a uh, bunch of questions that I didn't do last time uh, because it's kind of covered between um, <laughs> between a couple other lectures I've done, uh, but I haven't done this exact question in this exact way. So so let me do it. Um, I, I will do a kind of hybrid style. Um, so I'll keep notes on the side as if I'm doing it as a part of the timed assessment thing, but uh, I am uh, taking it a lot slower than I would be. Because when you're doing it as timed assessment, basically all you need to enter here within 20 minutes are the answers. So describing free body diagrams, you know, you do have to type some stuff. Um, and um, here, really, all you have to do is answer this in this uh, answer box. And for all the other steps that you will need to go through that I will lay out here, uh, it's you included in your attached work that you can organize after the time limit has run out. So, so that is the intent of how this is supposed to work. And uh, so what I'm doing, demonstrating right now is basically both of those things. So it's going to take a long more than 20 minutes. And it's not because it's impossible to do within 20 minutes. It's just that I'm doing some portion of the stuff that, um, that I, yeah, ask people to do after the 20 minute time limit that I'm doing. So, okay, so the question says consider a block of mass M on a ramp of mass big M. The ramp is sitting on a frictionless table. Oh, I can't draw here. I'll just leave it be. Um, and the friction block in the ramp is nearly okay, that's good. The incline of the ramp is there. Measure, of, okay. Yeah, keep an organized record of the work. So he says, assuming no additional forces apply, describe the forces on the free body diagrams. Uh, all right, so, uh, so let me start off with the free body diagrams. We have two objects, so we should have two free body diagrams. Uh, let me draw the one for the small block. That's easier because <laughs> uh, it's a simple one. There's always going to be gravity. And looking at it, it's not going to accelerate straight downward. It will be accelerating along the ramp somehow. So um, so this is cannot be the complete set of forces I'm thinking through. And oh, yeah, there must be no more force from the, um, from the ramp below it. And these two added, I can somehow imagine them adding up to give me acceleration in this direction. So I think that's complete. Let me draw the fr uh, free body diagram for the ramp. Um, uh, all, this is unusual. A lot of situations with ramp is not part of our system. Here, because the ramp is free to move, it's part of our system. <laughs> we have to draw free body diagrams for that. So there's gravity, mg, um, pulling it down. The ramp, if anything, I hope you have enough intuition that if anything, it's going to accelerate to the left. So the forces you draw has to match that. Uh, gravity, it doesn't, you know, it just says it's gonna accelerate downward, that's not right. So there must be a force to counter this so that it doesn't accelerate downward. That would be the normal force from the table. That's gonna be vertical, straight upward. Let me label this normal force from the table. Um, I need a leftward force and I hope it, uh, so, um, if it doesn't immediately come to you, then what I recommend that you do is what I call Newton's third law check. It's uh, both a necessary part of your asking the question, did you draw the forces, one, and two, for this question in particular, uh, figuring, uh, kind of getting an inspiration for how you could get acceleration that goes leftward. And um, so for each of the forces, you're asking this question, uh, is it an external force or an internal force? If it's an internal force, then where's the reaction force pair? So gravity, external, normal force, that's an internal force. It's coming from the ramp on the small block. So I must have a reaction force pair, which, oh, I forgot there. Yeah. So let me just draw that. It's gonna go in the opposite direction with an equal magnitude. That's the proper use of Newton's third law. You know, so you don't start by looking for forces that are equal in magnitude. You find the Newton's third law pair, and that tells you that they are equal in magnitude. 
that's the proper way to use it. Um, okay, let's keep going. The, the ta normal force from table, that's external. <laughs> Gravity, that's also external, good. So, so this is the complete free body diagram. Um, and once you have this, then um, you should be able to go. So uh, for the answer here, I do recommend, I guess you draw it out first because this kind of thinking process, it's hard to do it without a visual reminder. But once you've drawn it, then you describe the di diagram like you are describing to a blind person. So on the free body diagram of a block, M, uh, sorry, I'm typing it like, I'm typing my solution. Block M, uh, uh, there are two forces, uh, gravity, mg downward, and uh, normal force, and uh, perp to the surface. On the free body diagram of ramp M, there are three forces. Gravity hinge downward, um, normal force and T perp to the table, and three, the normal force N, that is re reaction uh, force pair to the other N. Um, yeah, and I think that actually and you know, in your description, if you somehow forgot that, that's fine. As long as you indicate it in your diagram somehow. Um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, so after the due date, which is now, you should be able to see the solutions. So, so as you look at your work, you should see this a key icon, and when you click on it, it'll show you the solution, uh, which is um, you know the <laughs> model answer. So, okay, so part B says, when no external force is applied, the block M is allowed to slide down the ramp, the ramp will slide to left, right? Oh, and so for part B, it looks like we are uh, modifying, um, modifying the setup because it says, so we apply a force F on the ramp. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this over and, uh, just modify a few things. And th this is the kind of stuff that I would say, uh, do it after uh, your time runs out, not before. All right, so this was my free body diagram from before. It's saying we'll apply a force F on the ramp. Let me do that. Uh, right word. So there's a right word the force here. Uh, so that the plug in slides down the ramp and the ramp, okay, so it's telling us the acceleration of this, which is zero, and the block will be accelerating down the ramp as some um, acceleration. What is the magnitude of force F? Okay, so uh, this is our new modified setup, and the rest is standard strategy. You just um, Go through the steps, uh, the four steps. This was step number one. We drew the free body diagram. Step number two, uh, now we need to define coordinate axis. So for the um, for the block, you define it so that your positive x direction is along the direction of acceleration and y is perpendicular to that. Uh, for the ramp, your acceleration is zero, so you kind of have a free choice in how you define your coordinate axis. The way you should use that choice is one that simplifies your work for the next step, which is um, yeah, which is decomposing forces into components. So if I choose any axis other than this, I'll have to decompose a bunch of forces. But by defining these axes, I can avoid decomposing F and T or MG into components. So step number three, decompose the forces into uh, their X and Y components. So looking at here, I need to decompose MG into the Y and X component. And uh, you kind of should get into practice of, you know, um, wait, um, drawing auxiliary figures and knowing where angles theta are. And when you track through that geometry, that data for the ramp should end up here, which is why the X component is MG sine theta and the Y component is MG cos theta. Um, and actually, if you oh, wait, sorry, no. <laughs> okay, so that's a block M, and I need to do it for the ramp M as well. Um, so my normal force N, uh, that's the reaction force to this. Now I'm gonna need to decompose that into X and Y components. 
And let me draw the auxiliary figures again. So this is theta, which means this is theta, or 90 degrees minus theta. That's 90 degrees. So this must be theta. So with that, uh, the x component is an sine theta. I think that's right. Um, yeah. And sine theta and the y component is an cosine theta you know always draw these triangles because if you are just uh, so even i <laughs> won't get it right 100 percent of the time unless i drew the triangle and actually went through a geometry exercise so so okay that's step number three uh, and these steps one two three the purpose of those steps are to prepare you for the next step writing down newton's second law equations so you have two objects, two dimensions each. You're going to be writing four equations for Newton's second law equations. And if you've done steps one through three comprehensively, then step number four is as easy as just uh, copying the information that's in this diagram into your equation. So let me do that. Um, so my equation one is, um, let me start out with the small block. Uh, and I'm going to write it in a way where I write the acceleration first. So the acceleration in the x direction, that's going to net be net force on small block m in the x direction divided by its mass. Um, so in the x direction, oh, I have only one force, x component of gravity. mg sine theta divided by m. Oh, so that will cancel out. Uh, yeah, okay, let me not get too distracted and move on to my second equation. Uh, my equation number two is the going to be the y component for a block m. So the acceleration will add up to zero. That was the whole purpose of our step number two, uh, how we define coordinate axis. It's going to be net force for block m in the y direction divided by m. It's a little bit superfluous, but I'm just writing it down so that it's um, formalistically correct. Uh, the y component, so I have n minus mg cosine theta. n minus mg cosine theta divided by m, all of that is equal to zero. So, yeah, let me not get distracted. I was about to solve for n, which I will eventually do. But uh, um, I, the one of the purpose of this systematic problem solving approach is that um, you do it step by step. You don't get distracted by every shiny new thing. Um, so I'm now to ramp uh, big M and let's deal with the X first. So the acceleration in the X direction here is zero because we are applying the right amount of force F so that it remains stationary. Um, so the net force in the X direction um, which will add up to zero, it will be F minus the X component of normal force. So N sine theta divided by big SM. And no other X component, yeah, good. And uh, finally, the Y component, I'm just gonna remember that NT is there. Uh, it, it still adds up to zero. It's stationary in the Y direction as well net force in the y direction divided by n uh, so i have nt normal force from table minus the the two downward forces the y component of uh, normal the other normal force and cosine theta minus mg divided by m and uh, having written it down i will tell you that this part last equation is not all that useful because it um, it does this thing. So when once you have written all the equations, so these are your four Newton's second law equations, and um, this is your end of standard strategy, and it leaves you in a place where you can uh, assess uh, what you have, what you might still need. So you have four equations. That's a four pieces of information that can be used to solve four unknowns. So I'm hoping <laughs> there are only four unknowns. So. So let's just do unknown counting. We have, uh, we don't know acceleration, one. Um, theta we are given, we don't know normal force, two. And mass, um, 
I'm going to start by treating as though I know math, because um, I have from experience that masses tend to cancel out. But so, um, so I'll just leave math alone. Uh, it might be known, it might be unknown, but I'll just leave it alone for now. Force F that we are looking for, so third unknown and big mass M. I, does it? I mean, it doesn't say mass is known, but often we treat this as known given quantity, so I'm gonna leave them alone. <laughs> and uh, looking at equation four, yeah, normal force from the table, I don't know. So I have four unknowns, four equations, I can solve for that. And because the question is only asking you for one thing, the magnitude of force F, you can save a little bit of algebra by planning out your steps. So I'm looking at my system of equations. So I want to solve for the applied force F. Doing that will require me to know N. Uh, so I will need to solve for N here. And I think that's it. I don't really need to know the um, acceleration or uh, or the, the normal force from the table. Uh, I see a question, what does T in NT stand for? I guess I was thinking of table. I don't know if uh, they said a table, but that's what I had in my head. Um, yeah, table. <laughs> T stands for table. Uh, you know, you can come up with your own labeling things just to make sure you... Uh, noted somewhere so that someone else reading it can <laughs> figure it out. So so this is what I'm going to do. I don't really need equations 1 and 4, so I'll just use equations 2 and 3 to solve for uh, force F. Uh, I guess uh, and um, when you want a single quantity, this is my advice, solve for that last. Because whatever I'm solving for right now, I'm going to eliminate it. So if you try to solve for F first, you might end up eliminating it. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'll use the equation two uh, to solve for n. So all this is equal to zero. So uh, so n must be equal to mg cosine theta so that the, this thing on the right-hand side is up to zero. And this is going to be my tool to eliminate n from all the other equations. I substitute this into the equation three that gets me, uh, let me do it this way, zero is equal to F minus, and wherever I see N, I put this thing, mg cosine theta, sine theta over, uh, oh, I have to be careful. That's a small m, this is big m. Oh wait, I don't have to be careful. That's up to zero, so this, um, I can imagine multiplying both sides by big m, and this will cancel out. So F, solving this for F, apply the force F should be equal to mg sine theta cosine theta. And uh, if you leave your answer here, that's fine. So really all you need to put in is something like this. F is equal to mg, uh, mg sine theta. I don't know. You know. It's all manually graded. So, um, so if instead of this, you put in like F equals mg sine theta cos theta. That's terrible, but I think I will understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> so, so yeah, and uh, you can simplify this a little bit more, but uh, like, you know, I think the model solution has this written out as mg sine 2 theta over 2. Like, it's equivalent, but um, here you don't really get anything much uh, from that, so. Uh, you can do either. So that's uh, part B. Now part C is a separate part. It says uh, what force F should be applied. So uh, let me um, do a bit of a sketch. I think I want to copy this over because I'm probably going to be using it. Okay. But I hope if there are any questions through part B so far, uh, people here asked. <laughs> um, so I'm going to need that. And um, for part C, um, I need to make sure I understand the question correctly. So for part C, it's saying what force F should be applied so that the plug M does not slide down the ramp. So we have this situation, a uh, slidable ramp and a block. 
And as we worked out above, uh, if we apply some amount of force here, most of the time block would uh, uh, accelerate downward. Yeah. And um, I hope you have this uh, intuition that if you push the block fast, hard enough, that at some point, the uh, if you push the ramp hard enough, that at some point, the uh, block actually does the opposite. Instead of sliding down, it would slide up. Uh, if you don't have that intuition, in the lecture videos, I actually demonstrate this with one of the simulations. Um, and ask me in the lab. I have a physical demo that I can use to demonstrate it as well. But um, but that's a thing that happens. If you push this ramp fast, uh, hard enough with a large enough force F, then this slides up. So given those two possible universes where M could slide down or up, you could uh, imagine just the right amount of force so that this M does neither. It stays here. And it's uh, important to understand what that stays here means. It doesn't mean that the M is stationary. What it means is that M is quote-unquote stationary relative to the ramp. So what is really happening is that the ramp and the block are accelerating together to the right uh, with the same amount of acceleration. The block isn't moving relative to the ramp, so they share the same acceleration, they move together. That's the scenario that part C asks you to consider and solve. And I think I've said this before, this would be a fairly difficult question that normally that I wouldn't be justified in asking you to solve in 20 minutes. The only reason I feel um, I can ask you this question is because uh, you you or you should have seen this exact scenario before in the, the lecture video where I worked out a worksheet question that's exactly this. The only thing that you knew in this timed assessment question is actually part B, which is easier. So the harder part, it should have been something, or I say it should have been something that you have seen before. So, um, so that's the only reason I feel comfortable putting this question here at all. Like if uh, this wasn't a scenario you have seen before, then yeah, it's too difficult, and I can't, I shouldn't expect you to do it in 20 minutes. Like you know, with explanations and everything, it's already taken me 22 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, so let me just uh, finish this up. So. In this free body diagram, I do need to include that applied force F to um, you know, include that. And uh, the thing that might be surprising is that other than that, uh, which I already had in part B, I don't actually need to change anything in free body diagram other than the, my change the expectation that the block is accelerating to the right with A and the ramp is accelerating to the right with A. Like other than that, nothing else in free body diagram changes. The kind of the force that's on um, block, small block M to make it not slide down, that's gonna be that's gonna be provided by the normal force on it. Just its magnitude changes from part B above. So okay, so that's step number one. Let all of the standard strategy. <laughs> step number two, we have to define our coordinate axis. And um, so it this time it's gonna be actually straight axis for both of them because that's the way these will be, um, the x-axis will be parallel to the acceleration. So that changes which force we break down um, on the free body diagram of the small block. I, instead of break down gravity, I now break down the normal force into y and x components. Um, and I think if I track the angles, this was the angle theta, 90 minus theta, so this is theta, so this should be an uh, sine theta, and this should be an cos theta. And actually, I can save a little bit of work now because I'm um, I'm you, somehow it worked out that I can use the same set of coordinate axes for both uh, free body diagrams. That means when I break down this uh, force into components. I've th that I can just uh, use that for this force because the action reaction force they are opposite in directions and like, yeah, <laughs> opposite in directions and um, so without going through any more algebra I know the x component is n sine theta here or sorry geometry 
this is n cos theta here. I don't have to track angles because the, the equal and opposite thing should work out on a component by component basis. So, okay, so that's step number three. Now we are ready to um, do step number four, uh, writing down Newton's second law equations. So let me just copy the information off of the diagrams that we have been uh, maintaining and meticulously labeling. So my first equation, I'm going to start with the block M again. It's a X um, direction of acceleration is given by the net force in the X direction divided by its mass. So, um, oh, so because our axis is different, uh, my X component of force is N sine theta. It's got nothing to do with gra uh, gravity. N sine theta over N equation one is that so equation two it's going to be the y component of forces for plug m they add up to zero <laughs> for zero acceleration because it's not sliding up or down um, that force in the y direction over m is equal to um, so i have n cosine theta as the positive y component and i have mg the whole mg um, is yeah, oh, sorry, it confused me briefly if this was the same as before. I think cosine is on the other side. <laughs> so it's not the same as before, because n should be larger in this scenario. Um, third equation that's going to come from the ramp again. So here, it's going to be the same acceleration. This is something I do try to be careful when I use the same letter uh, for a particular dynamical quantity. That's because I've worked it through and convinced myself that they are actually equal in magnitude. Uh, in case of this normal force, that was because of Newton's third law. In case of these accelerations, it's because the uh, condition that was specified in the question. Um, when they are not, I would have had to subscript them to give them distinct labels. So that acceleration is equal to the net force on the ramp in the x direction divided by its mass. Um, so yeah, I have applied the force F minus the N uh, sine theta over big M. And finally, the last question is again zero. Um, oh, it's the exact set, same set of questions. Actually, last, uh, both of the last two, two question, equations are, I think it's some, the same thing I've written before. So N T minus N cos theta minus mg over m. So let's uh, uh, look through it again. So this is the end of the standard strategy. As before, we have four equations, four pieces of information that we can use to solve for our unknowns. Let's just count our unknowns to make sure that we have enough information to solve it. So um, we don't know acceleration still. We don't know normal force. Uh, already counted it. Not gonna count twice. And uh, we'll just say we know it. Uh, we already counted. Uh, apply the force. We don't know. That's the third. And um, already counted. Uh, and t fourth. Okay. So four unknowns, four equations. We should be able to solve it. And the question is asking for acceleration and force. So wait, is it? No, it's just asking for the force. What force F should be applied? Okay, so um, so we are already uh, 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 now we are again going to be deliberate because uh, you will find that some of these equations don't do anything useful for you. Equation four, like I don't have to do anything with it to find the force. So let me just look at. I'm going to be solving for force here, which means I need to find the normal force. Um, Oh, and uh, because here it's not zero, I also need to find acceleration. It's not good enough to find the normal force. So it looks like in equation two, I have just the normal force and no other unknown. So I can just solve for normal force here, plug it into anywhere else I see n and be rid of n. And as for this acceleration, I think if I solve for acceleration here, or it is solve for acceleration, and it's in terms of everything else that I already know or can know. Okay, so let's do it that way. Um, so let me solve equation two uh, for n. 
then my solution for n is equal to because this numerator has to add up to zero so n cosine theta is equal to mg which means n is equal to mg divided by cosine theta so i have that uh, let me rewrite my uh, system of equations so write it as 1b and uh, 2b um, so acceleration is this plugged in there so it's mg sine theta over cosine theta that sounds like a tangent theta over m oh m's cancel guess i could have done that before uh, this is in 2b it's 3b coming from equation 3 so still same acceleration is equal to f minus uh, that and um, so mg sine theta over cosine theta so it's also mg tangent theta and be careful this big n does not cancel that small n okay i have two equations two unknowns acceleration and force so i should be able to solve for it. in fact the easiest thing to do is one of those is already solved for acceleration so i think i can just plug it in here to eliminate acceleration and solve for f so uh, my uh, resulting equation from combining these two using substitution is g tangent theta is equal to f minus small mg tangent theta over big n um, i'm gonna do some of this algebra in my head if necessary pause the video and just <laughs> make sure your algebra agrees so f after a couple steps of algebra that i'm skipping works out to be small m plus big n times g tangent theta so uh, so that's the answer and um, and uh, if you saw oh we actually did solve for acceleration since acceleration is g tangent theta what this is really saying is that apply the force is equal to the sum of the for, uh, masses times the acceleration and i hope that makes intuitive sense um, the two things are accelerating together as one thing so like f equals ma yeah you make m the combined mass that should this make sense to me um so so yeah that's the answer here you would answer f is equal to m plus m uh, g tangent theta or something i don't know it's all manual review so so yeah that's it um it's, it's all manually graded so the score will just say zeros um, um but so since it's uh, now past the due date for this, you should actually be able to look at the model answer. And um, if you are looking at the model answers after having heard me go over this, then um, you know it would be basically doing the same thing that I've done here. So and oh, I guess in this preview mode, I don't have a way to um, attach my work. But uh, if I were in the regular timed assessment setup, then. I would uh, uh, basically get an export out of this and attach. Uh, by the way, when you are doing time to so I recommend that you do it on a paper. Whenever you are doing things on computer, it always takes a little bit longer compared to when you're doing on a piece of paper, even though it might take you longer to organize later. Um, the 20 minutes, it's a super short amount of time. See, I, you know, I know how to do this question and with all the explanations and everything, it still took me 34 minutes or so just working through that. So. So, okay, that's uh, this question. Um, I don't need completely, so hopefully I don't have to do it again in near future. Um, this is a challenging question, and I think this is a, a good question to kind of test uh, um, what gaps there might be in your understanding of the standard uh, strategy problem solving. Because um, uh, it requires you to not, uh, remember things like a Newton's third law. Because it's super easy to miss this normal force without that. And if you missed it, then kind of the rest of the parts won't make sense. <laughs> like without this normal force, part B doesn't work, part C doesn't work. Um, so, yeah. And uh, even after having gotten this normal force, uh, part B isn't trivial. It's easier. And part C definitely is harder because uh, you have to reason through all this and 